you can see we've got three divided by two to the negative third power. All right, so what do you think? How would you handle that one? Well, like we were talking about just a minute ago here, when you see that negative exponent, you can take the reciprocal of the base, so that's gonna be two over three, and now it's raised to the positive third power. Now remember, when, you're, when you cube something or raise it to the third power, it means you have one, two, three of these all multiply together. So if you get stuck, you could write it out like that, but the shortcut is you distribute that power to the numerator and the denominator. Now notice there's not any exponents here, so I, let me rewrite this. This is two to the first and three to the first, right? So even though you don't see an exponent, it's still raised to the first power, they just don't write it. And then, like we were talking about earlier, when you have a power to a power, meaning an exponent raised to another exponent, what do you do? You multiply those exponents together. So one times three is just gonna give us three, and same thing here, one times three is gonna give us three. Okay, so two cubed is two times two times two, which is eight. Three cubed is three times three times three, which is 27, and we've got it. Okay, so let's go to example number two. Getting a little bit more challenging, right? So we've got two, x to the negative two, y cubed, that whole quantity times five, x to the fourth, y to the negative seventh. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna multiply like terms. So what I mean by that is we're gonna multiply the numbers together and then the ones that have x together and the ones that have the, the base y together. So let's go ahead and do that. So two times five gives us 10, x to the negative two, x to the fourth. Remember, when you multiply and you have the same base, you're gonna add those exponents, so negative two plus four is positive two. And then y cubed times y to the negative seventh, again, we're gonna add, so that's gonna be negative four. Okay, so we're almost there, but in your final answer, you don't wanna have negative exponents. That's considered improper. So how can we handle this negative exponent? Well, like I was telling you earlier, there's a couple different ways. Like you could think of this as y over one, right? Because anything divided by one is itself. And then the negative says, okay, we're gonna take the reciprocal. So that means this is really gonna be like one over y to the positive four. And then when you have a fraction, you can raise both the numerator and the denominator to that power, okay? So this is one to the fourth power, which is one times one times one, which is just still one. And then y to the fourth power, which is y to the fourth. Again, remember, there's really understood to be a one as an exponent there. So power to power, we multiply. But I don't know if you realize this, but that was kind of a lot of steps, right? So the shortcut is really just to, let's rewrite this again as, uh, I'll write it up here, 10x squared, y to the negative fourth, is to think of this whole thing as being over one, right? Because anything divided by one is itself. So we just made this whole quantity into a fraction. And when you see that negative exponent, you move it to the other side of the fraction bar and you make it a positive exponent. So that negative says take the reciprocal, but you just move it to the other side of the fraction bar. Now, if it was down here in the denominator and it had a negative exponent, I would move it up to the numerator and make it a positive exponent. Okay, so Long story short, our final answer is 10x squared all divided by y to the fourth, and you got it, okay? Let's go to the next one, number three. So 20x to the negative third, y squared, all divided by 4x to the negative one, y to the negative third. Okay, so again, remember we're working with like terms. So we've got 20 divided by four, which is five. Okay, now see here we're dividing. And remember we talked about this earlier, when you divide, you subtract and the answer goes in the numerator. So we've got negative three minus negative uh, one. Negative three minus negative one, when you subtract, it's like adding the opposite. So this is really like negative three plus one, which gives us x to the negative two, and we're putting that result in the numerator, okay, in the top here. And then again, here we're dividing. We have the same base y, so we take the numerator power minus the denominator. Two minus a negative three is really like two plus three, which gives us y to the fifth. And again, remember, anything divided by one is itself. Okay, so we're almost there, but again, when you get that negative exponent, you wanna move that quantity to the other side of the fraction bar. That's like taking the reciprocal, okay? And so what we get for our final result is five y to the fifth all over x squared. Now, I just wanna mention, sometimes students mistakenly say, oh, you know, Mario told me that when I see a negative exponent to take the reciprocal, and they'll take this whole fraction and flip the whole thing over, but, this quantity is not in parentheses. It's not like this whole thing is being raised to the negative two, so it's just gonna be the base, okay, that's gonna be moving to the other side of the fraction bar. Okay, let's keep going. We're taking up a notch each time, right? So now we're under number four. We've got three x y to the negative two divided by two, the quantity squared times six x to the negative one y cubed. All right, so what do you think about that one? Well, okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna distribute this power, okay, 
to the numerator and the denominator. Now, here's where students make mistakes, and I, and I don't want you to make this mistake. Again, see this three? There's not a power there, so if you want, you can think of it as a one. The same thing with this two, you can think of it as a one. And remember, when you have a power raised to a power, you know, an exponent raised to another exponent, you multiply those together. So let's write what we've got so far. So one times two gives us three to the second. Again, you don't see an exponent for this x, so that's understood to be one. So one times two is two, right? Negative two times two is negative four. And then this is all divided by one times two. Okay, that's gonna be two to the second, right? All right, so far so good. Now for this one, we're just gonna carry it over. So six x to the negative one, y to the third, and you can think of this as being over one. Sometimes students feel a little bit confused about fractions. They just, when they see fractions, they get confused. What do I do? If you have a quantity that's not a fraction, you can always put it over one. And the nice thing about this is, is that it, it lines up the numerators and the denominators, so you can multiply across horizontally like that. Okay, so that makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. So three squared is nine, because three times three, see three twice, times six is equal to 54. Over here, we've got x squared times x to the negative one. Remember, when you multiply, you add the exponents, so two plus negative one is one, and then y to the negative fourth times y cubed, y to the negative one, because we're adding. Two squared is four, times this one is four. Okay, we're getting closer. Now, when you see this fraction, you can reduce it, okay? You can treat it just like a normal fraction, okay? You just reduce, uh, let's see, two goes in here twice, two goes in here 27 times. But notice we've got this negative exponent. So what do we do with that negative exponent? We move that quantity to the other side of the fraction bar, right? They make it positive. So our final result, 27x over two times y. All right, great. So we're gonna do a few more problems, but I just wanted to mention that, you know, if you're enjoying these videos, you know, subscribe to the channel. And if you wanna dive deeper into learning Algebra One, check out my Learn Algebra One video course for sale. I go through 87 lessons with lots of examples. Uh, lots of students have already uh, taken the course and you know, it's benefited them. And I walk you through that Algebra One from the very beginning, building on each concept, going through the different topics in order as they're normally covered in an Algebra One curriculum. So check out that course. You can uh, see the 13 free previews, uh, so 13 free lessons in there, and see if it's something that's right for you. And, decide whether you wanna purchase it from there. But let's jump into the rest of these uh, examples and see if you can do them on your own and you know double check with me, right? So we've got three x to the negative two, y to the fifth. That whole thing is raised to the zero power. Now, this is a little bit of a trick question. So I didn't mention it when we first started talking about the rules of exponents, the basic rules of exponents when we started. But do you remember when you raise something to the zero power? Do you remember what that equals? Well it equals one. So because this whole thing is raised to the zero power equals one, and I'll show you why, I'll show you an example. Remember how we said that when you divide, you subtract, right? Well, say for example, if you had x to the fifth divided by x to the fifth, well, five minus five is zero, right? And we said that anything to the zero power is one, which makes sense because x to the fifth is being divided by itself. How many times does x to the fifth go into x to the fifth? one time. So you can see, understand a little bit better why anything to the zero power is one. Okay, over here, number six, we've got two x y to the fifth all to the negative two power. Okay, this is a good problem and it's one that stumps students a lot of times. So see if we can do this. Now there's a couple different ways to do it. One way is to go ahead and distribute the power like I was doing before, but I'm gonna do it a slightly different way just so you can see. So you can think of anything as being over one, right? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, because this is a negative exponent, and this whole thing's in parentheses, I'm gonna move that whole quantity to the denominator, the other side of the fraction bar, right? I'm gonna raise it to the positive two. When you move something and there's nothing left, there's understood to be a one there, because one times anything is itself, right? Okay, so now we've gotten rid of the negative exponent. All I have to do now is distribute that two into the parentheses. Remember to distribute to the number as well as all the variables. So two squared is four, right? x squared, because again, see this is a one, one times two is two, and then five times two is 10. Don't get the rules confused. Sometimes students will say, oh, five plus two is seven. That's only if you have the same base, oops, 
uh, x to the fifth times x to the second. See, if you're multiplying, then you add. If you just have that one base, power to power, then you times. Okay, last question, see if you can get it. Uh, number seven, we've got x cubed, y to the negative two, all over two x to the fifth, times eight x to the negative third, y to the fourth, all over three x to the fifth, y to the seventh. Wow, okay, so what do we do? Well, we're gonna multiply the numerators and the denominators together, right? So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna multiply, uh, did I say numerators and denominators together? We're gonna multiply across the numerators together and then the denominators together. So we've got, let's see, one times eight, which is eight. We've got x cubed times x to the negative three, which is x to the zero, right? Because three plus negative three. And then y to the negative two times y to the fourth is y to the second, right? Because we're adding. Two times three is six. x to the fifth times x to the fifth is x to the tenth, right? And then uh, y to the seventh just comes along for the ride because there's not really any y's here. If you wanted to, you could think of it as y to the zero and zero plus seven is seven, right? Because anything to the zero is one but that's not necessary. Just, if there's not any other y's, just carry it along. Okay, so now we've combined it into one fraction. This is gonna make it a little bit easier uh, instead of working like with this whole uh, two quantities here. And let's just reduce. So we've got uh, two goes into here three times and four times. Uh, when we divide, we subtract. So zero minus 10 is negative 10. So we get four uh, x to the negative 10 all over three. And then two minus seven is negative five. Now. I'm going to show you one other technique that you can use, and that's that when we divide, we subtract, right? And the answer goes in the numerator. That's important. But another way to look at it is y squared is really like two y's. Y to the seventh is really like seven y's all multiplied together, right? And you can see two of these y's are canceling with two of these y's, leaving five y's left in the denominator, right? So you can do it that way, kind of cancel out you know, however many cancel out with however many in the numerator and denominator. But you can see here, we've got a negative exponent. We're just gonna move that down to the denominator on the next step anyways, that's y to the fifth. Same thing here, we're gonna move this down to the denominator, that's gonna be x to the positive tenth. So our final answer is four over three x to the tenth, y to the fifth, and you got it. So great job, I hope this video helped you understand working with negative exponents better, uh, and I look forward to seeing the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.